Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to start a stove so as to avoid spring autumn syndrome, which is where there's a cold plug of air in the flue system, which is mostly an issue when you have a flue system that is mostly external, um, such as this one, which goes through, out through the wall at 45 degrees and then up to two storeys up the side of the house. So our weapon of choice is an auto start blowtorch, which you can get in B&Q for around and about £20 plus £5 for the gas bottle, which lasts ages. And a good way to check for um, if you're going to have an issue, first of all, it's best to anticipate issues just by knowing that your stove and knowing the conditions. Um, but a good way to check is to actually hold your hand up here between the top vermiculite plate and the top of the stove and to see if you can actually feel any cold air coming down. And I can actually feel a little bit of cold air at the moment. Not much, just a little bit. But that indicates that there's a bit of cold air in the flue pipe. It's falling back down rather than drawing up. So for lighting the stove, I've got my kindling stack here. You can see that the air vents underneath um, of the riddling grate are open. And I've got a fire lighter buried in there. But buried in there. Um, I've gone with the uh, log on top method because I'm fairly confident in my stove. Um, but if you want to be super safe, you can do the... Uh, top down burn method which is where you have two logs on the bottom and then you bridge your kindling over them um ash pan air control fully open and the ash pan is pulled out a few mils that will make it just that little bit faster to start and the top air control is fully open so let's start our preheating process would you like to light please So we're just going to fire the flame up between the top plate and the uh, top of the, the stove. Now, normally just as par for the course, when I'm lighting the stove on, under almost any circumstances, I'll hold this here for around in about 30 seconds. Um, 30, 30, 30, 30 seconds to 45 seconds. If I anticipate that there's a bit of an issue, as I do just now, I might hold it there for a bit longer, like a minute or so. And if I felt really a lot of cold air coming down, I'd probably hold it there for a good bit longer, um, maybe even up to five, six minutes. The official um, testing process for a flue system is to preheat the flue like this for about 10 minutes. In fact, it's a minimum of 10 minutes for the official flue test. So that gives you an idea of how much preheating can theoretically be required. Obviously, just for convenience factor, I want to get away with the minimum possible, so I try to just judge it based on experience. Um, and I did make an error the other day and smoked out the, the room a little bit. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's really rare that I smoke out the room now because I know my stove, I know my flue system, and I know the conditions. So I'd say that's probably enough. I'm gonna give it a go at that, so. I now light my fire lighter, turn off my burner, quickly close the door, and then we watch and hope. So the smoke's building up in the firebox, but you can see it is moving, so it should be drawing, and the flames are beginning to get a bit faster, which is what we want to see. This is where the Vardy's brilliant with that, being able to pull the ash pan out, it gets it going so fast. So let's say that we're out the woods now, that is almost certainly going to draw. Yep. You can hear the rushing, so that rushing is telling you that it's, it's effectively pumping. Um, it's pulling air in rapidly and then obviously expelling it up the flue. So that is a successful start and that won't smoke back now. Um, if it smokes back, for example, you know, an hour from now, that has got nothing to do with spring autumn syndrome. That would be indicative of blowback, which is where basically wind is blowing um, the flue gases back down the chimney. That's something that might happen in very rare conditions if the wind is blowing in a certain direction. Um, it's happened once on this stove last season. The wind was obviously blowing in a certain way, 
and the stove fought me all evening and I just basically gave up, let it go out and, and that was that. Um, there was no point in fighting with it. Once a season, twice a season isn't going to put me up or down. But if you're getting blowback regularly and um, when the stove is lit and established, then that is a problem and you'd need to look at um, solutions such as maybe an additional cowl length or um, uh, anti-downdraft cowl. So that's the stove well lit, well established. What I'll usually do now is I don't want it to be burning quite at that fast rate for too long. Uh, it's a bit aggressive. So we'll close the ash pan. And then a personal technique is I actually just pull it out a couple of mils on one side, just to try and get a little bit more than the standard amount of air. And that should burn away quite nicely now. Um, I can add a log to that a bit later on and I'll just keep it burning at roughly that rate for about 45 minutes. Um, run through probably three logs. That's a good size one there. So maybe, yeah, two more. Um, and that will get a really good bed of red hot embers in the base of the stove um, and make it a lot easier to basically keep it going and keep it nice and ticking over.